This is the first program in lecture series number six, where we are going to show you how using flowcharts you can draw or write flowcharts using for loop and how easy it is to convert it into a C program with almost very little or no changes. So let's say the first flowchart program is draw a flowchart to print the numbers from 1 to n, sorry, 1 to 10, not n, 10 using for flowchart construct. So what I'm going to do here is in flowchart, I'm simply going to say the initial value of number is 1 and the number will travel from 1 to 10 and I'll increase the value of number in a step of 1. Number will be 1, it will be 2, it will be 3, it will be 4, all the way till 10. And in the loop, I am going to print that particular number. And finally, when number reaches 11, I am going to come out and stop. So just see the similarity here. I have declared an integer variable number with the initial value 1. As long as number is less than or equal to 10, I am printing the value of number. Then what I am doing is, just as number is increased by 1 here, I am increasing number by 1. Then again, I'm going and checking the condition, whether 2 is less than or equal to 10. If it is true, I am printing 2. So this particular process is going to keep repeating till the value of number becomes 11. When number becomes 11, 11 is neither less than or equal to 10. I'm going to do a return 0 and going to halt. So just see how similar this for loop is with the for loop construct in a flowchart. The important thing here is initial value of number is 1, it is reaching the final value of 10. Step 1 means it is increasing the number by 1 at a time. In the previous flowchart, I showed you how you can print numbers from 1 to 10. Now let us say the user says, I don't want up to 10, I want to decide what number I am going to print. Let's say the user wants to enter the value of n, n can be 5, 100, thousand, million, any number the user likes. So I'm going to ask the user, enter the value of n. Okay, so I've declared a variable n, I'm asking the user, enter the last term or what is the last number from 1 to n you want to print. Suppose n is 100, it will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up till 100. So n's value is, let us say, 100. How long should I keep printing the value of the natural number as long as starting from i is 1 to 100 and increasing the value of i by 1. So what I am going to do here is in the for loop I have declared an integer variable i as 1. Now I convert this condition into i less than or equal to n. So what this condition does is it does this i equal to 1 to 100. So this is basically that particular condition. Step 1 means i is increased by 1. Then what I am doing here is I am printing the value of i. This particular process is keeps on repeating as long as the value of i is between 1 to 10. As long as the value of i is between 1 to 10, I am printing the value of i. At some point i is going to become 11. At that point I am going to stop. So just understand what I am doing here. For i equal to 1, same here, i equal to 1. Step 1, i is being increased by 1 every time. i should start from 1 to 100, assuming n is 100. So 1 is less than or equal to 100, every time i is going to be increased by 1. And in the body of the loop, this i value is going to be printed. So this particular loop will exactly match this particular construct in the flowchart. So this way I am going to print numbers from 1 to n, converting a flowchart into an exactly similar C program using the or loop. We are coming back to the famous Bogilal problem again. In this Bogilal problem, what it tells us is, asks us to draw a flowchart to print the bill for Mr. Bogilal who sells mangoes. Assuming n number of customers buy mangoes from him at the same time. So what I am doing is, I am defining n as a variable which keeps track of how many customers are buying mangoes during that particular time from Bogilal. I will keep track of the current customer. So suppose I have n as 5, i is going to be 1. So as long as i is going to be less than or equal to n, I am going to generate the bill. 
Now NM stands for number of mangoes, rate stands for rate per mango and bill stands for number of mangoes into rate. So the first thing is I'm asking Mr. Bogilal, enter how many customers you want to generate the bill for. So here enter total customers. I'm reading that into percentage D address of N. Next step what I'm doing is using a simple loop. I'm starting from the first customer to the last customer and step one means processing one customer at a time. So here again if you see it is exactly what is being done in the for loop. Initially I is one. As long as i is less than or equal to n, that means as long as I have not processed all the n customers, keep going into the body of the loop. In the body of the loop, what I am doing here is just watch. I am asking enter the number of mangoes and rate. Same here, enter numbers and rate for the customer number 1. So i indicates which customer we are processing. Enter the number and rate per mango for customer number 1. I am going to read number of mangoes and rate. Same here. Next what I am going to do, I am going to calculate bill is equal to number of mangoes into rate. Same here, bill is equal to number of mangoes into rate. Then what I am going to do here is, I am going to print the bill amount for that customer. So I am going to print bill, bill amount for customer percentage D, that means customer 1 is, this is the amount. I is increased by 1 because of step 1, I goes to 2. 2 is less than or equal to 5. Enter the number of mangoes and rate per mango of customer number 2. I am going to read the number of mangoes and rate. Bill is number of mangoes into rate. Calculate the bill. Same here. Calculate the bill. Print the bill. So this is how we are going to go. So in this particular flowchart, if you really see, there is a corresponding 1 to 1. Input n, print f n. For i equal to 1, i equal to 1. For i is between 1 to n, i is 1 to n. i plus plus because step number is just 1. You are just stepping 1 at a time. Input the rate and number of mangoes, same here, input the rate and number of mangoes. Bill is number of mangoes into rate, number of mangoes into rate. Bill amount is this, okay, I am printing the bill. So this particular process is going on repeating, okay, you can see this connection here is going to go on repeating as long as the value of the value of i is less than or equal to n. It means as long as I have not processed all the customers continue to generate the bill for each and every customer. In this particular Bogilal series of flowcharts, I am required to convert a flowchart to find the sum of the following series. So if you see the series 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6. So the plus sign is alternating and the minus sign is also alternating. So in order to find the sum of the series up to n, we need to know the value of n from the user. That's why I am saying input n. The same thing has been done here. Enter the last term of the series, this is n. Then in order to store the sum of the series, I need a variable sum is equal to 0, sum is equal to 0. Then why I am using sign is, I want to add once into sum, I want to subtract once into sum. Initially the first number is plus, so I make sign as 1. Then how long should I keep finding the sum? This is how it goes about. For the value of i being 1, till n, increase the value of i by 1 at a time. So here if you see same here, as long as the value of i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to n, increase the value of i by 1. Step 1 is the value of i. What am I supposed to do? I am supposed to say sum is sum plus sign into i. Same here, sum is sum plus sign multiplied by i. Just put a bracket to make it more clear. Bracket is not essential at all. Then what I am doing here is, I am saying sign is equal to minus sign because next time it is minus 2. So here I am coming back, sign is minus sign, exactly the same thing here. I go back here, I go back here, i becomes 2, 2 is less than or equal to n, then sum is sum plus sign into i. Again sign was negative, negative into negative is going to be plus 1. So this way I am going to continue to find the sum of the series as long as i is less than or equal to n. The minute that condition becomes false, I am going to print the sum. I am printing the sum here. I am printing the sum using this particular statement here. So this should help you understand the complete match between the logic of the flowchart and the program. So please take a look and try to see how the program matches or how the flowchart has stepwise been converted into a program. In this flowchart, 
we are going to print using the for loop the natural numbers in reverse order let's say my natural number is 10 i'm going to print 10 9 8 7 all the way till 1 so first thing i need to know is what is the last natural number i need to start with that's why i've said input n i have declared a variable n and i'm going to ask the user enter the value of the last natural number he or she wishes to start printing from so this is n the next step is i'm using a for loop here now instead of generally 1 to n since i'm printing in reverse i'm giving the initial value of i as n and i should travel from n reduce by 1 and go to 1 that's why you see step is minus 1 because i is not being increased i is being reduced by 1 every time so same here if you see here i is equal to n i is equal to n why i is greater than 0 because ultimately as long as i is greater than 0 i am continuing to print the value of i here you can see i is being reduced by 1 every time this i minus minus indicates that then here i am printing the value of i i am printing the value of i something so similar then when i come out you can see there is a perfect correspondence between this particular flow chart and this particular flow chart so here n this i is equal to n suppose n is 5 i is 5 5 is greater than 0 it will print 5 then it will become 4 4 is greater than 0 it will print 4 it becomes 3 3 is greater than 0 it will print 3 so this particular process will repeat as long as the value of i is not 0 the minute i becomes 0 this particular loop is going to halt and come and stop here so i hope you understood this particular flow chart to print the natural numbers in reverse order in this particular flow chart using the for loop let us see how we can print odd numbers from 1 all the way till n so the purpose of this particular session is to convert your flow chart into a similar program and you will see there's a very close correspondence between the flow chart logic and the program so let's say i ask the user to enter the odd number value he is interested to print at the very end let's say he enters 7 so n is going to be 7 then in the for loop what i am doing is starting from odd number 1 all the way till 7 i am increasing the value of i by 2 each time because it should be 1 it should be 3 it should be 5 it should be 7 so since i am increasing by 2 each time i need to print the value of i first so here you can see i is 1 as long as i is less than or equal to n i am increasing the value of i by 2 because it is a step 2 print the value of i print the value of i this particular process is keeps on happening or is keep on going to happen till the value of i exceeds n so suppose n is 7 as long as i is between 1 to 7 it will print 1 3 5 7 the minute i becomes 9 it will come out of this particular loop and it will halt and you will see the same thing on both the sides so this is again a very simple flow chart to show you using a for loop how you can convert it exactly into an equivalent c program